Uh, first thing with the quiz. Oh, sorry, I have to put my favorite student, otherwise, it just doesn't seem to work. First thing, Mr. Dewitt can't add. I think this quiz is actually out of 21. I know what happened. I changed it and I forgot to change the score. And in fact, I've changed it again for next year. It'll be out of 28. I made questions worth more because there are a lot of work, no pun intended. Your test is next class. Right now, your test is going to be three or four multiple choice, barely any, because the written questions, they just take so much time. Uh, and then there's going to be, I think, four written. And then a fifth written question will be a using principles of physics right to explain -y kind of a question. Okay? What are you going to see on the written section? If you look at the first quiz and this quiz, this is a pretty good indication of what you're going to see on the written section. So number one is asking me to find how much work I noticed that we're on the moon. I'm going to make sure I use the mass and radius of the moon. I had to get a formula sheet because those ones I don't have memorized. I have the Earth ones memorized, but I didn't know the moon ones. Um, we're above the surface of the moon, so I'm going to have to add the radius of the moon in. And we are in orbit, which means if I need to find something that's missing, I can say gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. But also, if we're in orbit, there is a change in kinetic energy. On your first quiz, I gave you a question that just asked how much work to lift something up. Then it would come crashing back down. This is how much work to lift it up and keep it there. Now, the fact that it's around the moon, it's going to be less than the Earth because there's less gravity. I think most of our Earth questions were in the 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 11th range. I have a feeling this will be in the 10 to the 9th or maybe low 10 to the 10th range. So I'm making some predictions already. Work is the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. What's change in anything? So I said the change in potential is going to be negative big G, big M, little m, all over R final minus negative big G, big M, little m over R initial. Uh, mass of the moon, which is 7.35 times 10 to the 24th. Radius of the moon, oh, this is a height. So here I had to put 2.06 times 10 to the 6th plus the radius of the moon, which I think is 1.74 times 10 to the 6th. Is that correct? I'm going from memory. And then I had a bit of a, oh, not that one, a bit of a snafu because I did it wrong this morning. But uh, I think if you carefully, carefully plug in the numbers, if you do them individually for the final art, for the potential energy final, I got negative 2.0973 times 10 to the 9th. And then for potential energy initial with the minus minus making it a plus, I got 4.508 times 10 to the ninth. So I ended up getting 2.4107 times 10 to the ninth joules. Is that right? Speak nodding. Okay. That's the change in potential. This question should be worth more marks than just three, but I had to give out three marks somehow. Change in kinetic. Is there a change in kinetic? If we're in orbit, there has to be some kinetic energy. There has to be some kinetic energy. Uh, I went final minus initial. It does say a stationary vehicle. In fact, we decided that if we're on the Earth, we're launching from the North Pole, Superman's Fortress of Solitude. The moon has a North Pole as well. So uh, a half. By the way, uh, do you know how they figure out which way is north on planets that don't have a magnetic field? Pause the video. This is purely nerd trivia. When I carefully crunched uh, the kinetic energy, you get 1.0488 times 10 to the 9 joules. Now, here I gave you the speed. I think in question number two, I didn't give you the orbital speed. I made you work for it. Uh, final answer, 3.46 times 10 to the 9 joules. I think, I think, I think. Three marks. Really, I should have made this five or seven or something like that because there's so much, so many steps here. Number two, also asking how much work, but now we're and we're in a stable orbit, but they didn't give us the orbital speed. What did I give you? The orbital where the biggest letter R. Now I could also have given you the orbital period, and you could have used that to find both the radius and the speed. If I really wanted to make this nasty, I'm going to be honest. On your test, I won't. It's just too much work, no pun intended. It's too much writing. We could handle it in theory, but that's just overkill. So it's going to start out the same way. I'm going to go work equals the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. It is the Earth. 
So I used mass of the Earth and radius of the Earth. They did give me a radius that 8.3 times 10 to the seventh that you can hardly read because I was writing in a hurry is a radius. So I don't need to add the radius of the Earth to that one. It did say it's measured from the center. And I got a change in potential energy of 1.8468, 1.847 times 10 to the 11th joules. Is that correct, I think? Change in kinetic was a bit trickier. To find the change in kinetic, I started out going final minus initial, but I didn't have a speed. So I said, okay, I'm gonna use gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. And that gave me an expression for V squared, big G, big M over R. Now there is a shortcut. Do I know the potential energy in orbit? Yeah. See it right there, Graham? If I wanted to, as a shortcut, and you can survive without this, which is why I've said you don't need to memorize this, but we did notice a couple of days ago that the kinetic energy in orbit was related to the potential energy in orbit. Does anybody remember how this number was related to the kinetic energy? There was more to it than that. It was First of all, the kinetic will be positive because kinetic. It was half of this number, but positive. I could have gone 1.5378 times 10 to the 10th divided by 2. That's going to be really close to your change in kinetic energy, yes? It's going to be a tiny bit off because this answer here is rounded off. But if I'd had it stored on my calculator, I could have gone divided by 2. And as a shortcut, I could have said, you know what? I can skip finding V. That's the change in kinetic. That, that, sorry, that's the kinetic energy in orbit right there. Uh, I didn't do that, but when I crunched the numbers, hey, look at that. I got 7.689 times 10 to the ninth. I had more decimals here when I crunched it with all the mass of the Earth and, ma and radius, but you can see to four sig figs, we're good. Okay. And then uh, add them up. 1.92 times 10 to the seventh. If you got that, Sorry, times 10 to the 11th. If you got that, 7 out of 7. Otherwise, I would give up part marks kind of like this. One mark for that. Half mark for each of those. One mark. If you find the change potential, I give you 3 out of 7 because that's almost half the battle. I would give you one mark for finding V, one mark for finding the uh, for writing down the kinetic energy equation, one mark for the answer, one mark for adding them together. Okay, turn the page. This still had a lot of teeth. Planet Duick has a mass of pi times 10 to the 30th and a radius of E times 10 to the 7th, for those of you who notice such things. What's its escape velocity? There is going to be an escape velocity question on your test. It's probably going to be near a black hole because I dream, I dream. How did we find escape velocity? What did we start out with? What was our approach for escape velocity? Now, some of you may have memorized the equation. That's fine, but should I ask it later on in the year, like on a final exam or something, you probably won't have it memorized, so you should be able to derive it. What did we use to derive the escape velocity equation? Are we in a stable orbit? Say no, because we're escaping. Okay? Uh, did it ask how much work? Do you see the word work written here? No? So what approach are we going to use then? What's our third big approach we've been using this unit? Conservation of energy. KE initial plus PE initial equals KE final plus PE final. But this was a bit strange, Gabe, because our final potential energy was zero because that's where we defined infinity to be zero. And we wanted to do this so perfectly that we came to a stop right when we got there. So we wanted to have no kinetic energy either. So we had this strange equation that looked like this, a half m v initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over r initial equals zero. I think I would plus the negative term over. If you do that, you get that. And the M cancels, although you could have canceled it on the previous line as well, the little M cancels. And so for me to get the V by itself, it's going to be 2 big G, big M over R initial 
square root. Now the other thing I would have no problem is l asking you to find the, the black hole's event horizon or Schwarzschild radius. It was the same equation except instead we solved for r. What did we let the speed be to turn it into a black hole? The speed of what? Speed of light. Okay, That would also be fair game. It's really reversing the procedure. And when you carefully crunch the numbers for planet Duick, I can dream. I got 3.92 times 10 to the 6th. Is that right? I would give you uh, one mark if I saw the conservation of energy equation. One mark for that, one mark for that, and one mark for the answer. The last question, oh. A lot of work, even though they didn't ask for how much work. A lot of work. <coughs> How am I going to do this one? Danielle, are we in a stable orbit? Uh, no. How do I know? We're crashing into the Earth. Okay, it's meant to be that obvious. Are we in a stable orbit? No. Did the question say or ask how much work? So what's our approach going to be? Conservation because of the change in height, change in speed, yucky curvy path. Um, I'll tell you the variations I'm going to ask on the test, but let me set it up first. So we're going to end up with a half m v initial squared plus negative big G big M little m over r initial equals a half m v final squared plus negative big G big M little m over r final. Uh, an m does cancel. Now, if I wanted to make this question easier, Grace, I could do a couple of things. I could have you start at rest as opposed to traveling at. If I started it at rest, you'd be able to cancel that whole term. I wasn't that nice this time. Uh, the final kinetic energy won't be zero because you're hitting the Earth at speed, so I can't make this term zero. And the final potential energy won't be zero because on the Earth relative to zero at infinity, you have negative potential energy. I could have you start a long ways away out at infinity, and that would allow you to cross out that term but I did not do that here. What two things will I ask you to find? I'll either ask you to find where we started or how fast we hit. If I was getting R initial by itself, I would not. If I was solving for R initial, I would not get R initial by itself. What I would do instead is I would plus this over to that side I would get an answer, and it would be this, negative big G, big M, little m over R initial equals some number. I don't know what that number would be. And then I would cross multiply. I would multiply the R initial to there, and I would divide the number down to there. That's if I was getting the R initial by itself. Here they're asking me to find the V final. Okay. Instead, then, I'm going to move this to that side. I'm going to plus it over. I did that. I got 0.5 vi squared minus big G, big M over R initial plus big G, big M over R final. I double checked. We're near the earth. So big M is going to be 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. R initial is going to be up there in uh, space. Uh, they gave me the distance from the center. So I know that this is a radius. I ended up getting, uh, for the kinetic energy, now I canceled out the m's, and I didn't multiply by 2. Some people chose to multiply by 2. I decided, you know what, I'm going to do that at the very end because this is ugly. So I got uh, 93845 with three zeros minus 1.813 times 10 to the 7th plus 6.2518 times 10 to the 7th equals a half v squared times by 2 divide by f, sorry, divide, times by 2 square root not divide by m, just times by 2 square root. I got 16,600, I think. Is that correct? People nod? See a few nods? Okay. And that, my friends, was the quiz. Can you give yourself a lovely score out of 21 at the very, very top of the page?